Hey, what's up, Rockstars? It's Rox, and I'm coming to you today with a review for Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 8, The Reunion Part 3. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so they have Nene join the the uh, couch, and like I said, they have Portia scoot on over. She comes in. She's got on her uh, dazzling, sparkling, see-through jumpsuit. Thought it looked nice on her. You know what? Nene is very broad. I mean, broad all the way around. She's just wide. She's not fat. She don't have a big stomach, none of that, but gosh, she is just very broad. Anyway, I thought she looked nice enough, and everybody was kind of in good spirits, so it was cool. Why did you come back, Nene? She says because she's the original housewife, and she always has to remind us, and that, um, you know, Real Housewives of Atlanta is her baby. I think we can all safely assume that she will be back next year. They show clips of her and Sheree fighting, and, you know, all of the drama that they've had, but you know what? They're in a good place now. Sheree says that, you know, even though they did quite a bit of fighting, arguing, and what nots they know each other's secrets and they've never really put it out there like that they could have gotten a lot worse and Nene says it wouldn't make sense for her to come on the show and you know still be mad at Sheree from three or four years ago which I mean yeah what, what, what I don't even really remember what exactly was the problem I mean I remember the arguments but I don't know what brought them about so you know what whatever then they ask is Nene a backstabber because that's what Kenya felt that Nene was Nene says absolutely not Kenya says well I felt like she came after Cynthia's job I've tried to get her to lose her job basically and to me that's stabbing somebody in the back Nene says well you know what Kenya only knows Cynthia's side of the story she doesn't really know the full thing so you know we're just going to excuse her but no I'm not a backstabber well frick frick what do you guys think about uh, Cynthia and Kenya's friendship okay you guys seem to make a big deal out of the back that Cynthia flip-flopped and Portia said well you know what Cynthia is the queen of flip-flopping she's the one that has admitted that herself and uh yeah she did kind of flop on uh Kenya. All of a sudden, she kicked her to the curb. Okay, Kenya said the same thing. We was going strong, going on dates and everything. And then all of a sudden, her main bitch came back and she kicked the side bitch to the curb. Cynthia said that she regretted that she didn't make it very clear that, you know, she and Kenya were actually good friends. They just were not BFFs. You know, she and Nene have a different relationship. And then as far as them calling uh, uh, Portia and Phaedra freaking frag, I actually like the whole little duo of Phaedra and Portia. They both single right now even though you know Phaedra's still married but you know what I mean Phaedra likes to live vicariously through Portia I believe I think she lets Portia bring out her inner ratchet that she wants to have and then when she get on her southern bell you know then she switches it up but Portia definitely gives Phaedra the 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 reason to be that other side the one that we know that Phaedra has so I'm cool with freaking frack, aren't you? Nene, do you want to fight Kenya? Absolutely not, I don't want to fight Kenya. But I think Kenya wants to fight me. Kenya says, no, I don't want to fight Nene. We actually have a lot in common. Even at the last reunion when she started talking about her mother. You know, we both have mother issues. But we are a lot alike. So that's why we clash a lot. But you know, we in a good place right now. So it's all good. Shit, Kenya ain't got time to be mad at Nene because she just focused all her damn energy on Kim. Speaking of Kim, they asked Nene. Nene, what does she think about Kim? And Nene says, well, you know what? I think she alienates herself. She always, you know, she just gets up and leave. Like, you know, I got to do something in the morning. And Nene was like, shit, they, that's what they do now? Shit, we be here all night recording. Kim just be like, I got to bounce. And Kim was like, well, you know what? I have a routine. I have things that I do. It's already set in stone and this and that. And <laughs> they was all looking at her like, we all got routines, baby. And we all still got to be here. So, um, maybe the producers were a little lenient with, uh, Kim. They talk about the friendship that Phaedra and Kim have. And, uh, you know, Kim was just like, it's just, you know, our friendship with everybody else. My friendship with everybody else is just not as organic. <laughs> and then he was like, but you know what? It can be organic. I can be organic. I said, bitch, not organic. O-R-G-A-N-T-I-C. <laughs> I got him Nene be fucking the words up. But, uh, you know, we already know that Kim says she's not coming back. I still, well, actually, I think I do believe that she's not coming back now. After that, that last episode last night, yeah, I think maybe that has confirmed it for me. But, child, I still won't say never. You know, shit happens over the summer. And money might look good to her. They might offer her something. Actually, I don't know, you guys. When I think about it and how Andy was, I don't even think he wants her to come back. Because these bitches is just, <laughs> you know, they full of shit. And Andy was so over it. But we'll talk about it in a little bit. Chateau Charade versus Moore Manor. Neither of them are in the damn house. 
I don't even think any of them are in their house right now, even though they all said they would be in by March. We're in April now. Unless, you know, the bloggers haven't, you know, picked up on the fact that she's moved in. Kenya said she was supposed to be in there by March 5th. And then Sheree said four weeks after that, I said, bitch, now you is a lie, bitch. Now you know you lie. Child, just say you don't know. I mean, what is the fucking hold up? Is she waiting on her money to come through from, you know, the Real Housewives, like that last check before she can get in there. I was like, girl, you might, it's just like the running gag now. Yeah, I don't think neither one of them are in there. They had the bet that, you know, they would be in before Christmas. Neither of them were. I still feel that Kenya probably will be in before Sheree. And speaking of Sheree, how did it feel to be back? You know what? It feels good. It feels good. She's happy. She wants that fucking peach. And I really hope they give it to her. I think she deserves it. Again, freaking frack bosom buddies or should I call them booty buddies always showing their ass having a good time but like I said I think that they're fun you guys when they show all of the camaraderie between the two of them they ask candy candy does that you know make you mad does that make you jealous you know sad that your friendship with you and Phaedra is no longer and she was just like uh oh, well no that doesn't make me upset I feel bad that the friendship is just not where it used to be Candy don't give a fuck about Phaedra and Portia and anyway Portia is always around Candy as well I mean I see her post with her um you know Candy quite often so I think she has a relationship that shit with Phaedra and Candy is so dead I'm tired of talking about it they pin Kim to the wall about the fact that you know she feels that the girls are not classy that they're full of ratchetry Kim was just like I'm just not used to this type of you know I ain't used to this type of bitch that's all that's all I'm trying to say they point out the fact that Portia is a lot different than when she was with Cordell now that she's single Nene said the bitch was wearing <laughs> kitten heels back when she met. I was like she wasn't that bad but she definitely was the little doting southern belle wife who listened to everything that her man said and did everything that her man told her to do and was quite spiritual and she didn't do this that and the other I mean it is a completely different Portia today than what we had back then Nene said I don't know if Portia is any better or worse off she said there are some things that are worse in Portia and Portia was like you know what that really hurt me I feel judged just because I'm living my life and I'm trying to figure things out right now you know everybody said just because I'm twerking that doesn't mean that I'm a hoe just because I see different guys that doesn't mean I'm fucking everybody and Nene says yeah I, I know that but still people judge you from what you do and I've always told you when I thought that you was doing way too much basically Portia was just like just because I show my ass doesn't mean I don't have class that rhymes y'all then you guys we get the husbands out you know, the husbands are over it. You know, we find out that uh, Matt, even though he's not a husband, he is in love with Kenya. Kenya is in love with him. She says that he's a great guy. I really do believe that their relationship is real. I know still people th don't think that is true. Peter, you and Matt okay? Yeah, you know. Peter calls him um, his son. And Matt says, yeah, and he's my Uncle Ben. They was like, oh, yeah, that nigga been, he been reading the blogs for sure. He been watching. I was like, he been watching these damn videos, everybody calling him Uncle Ben. Then we find out that Sheree and Bob, you know, that it really is something that they're working on. She says that she can see, you know, slivers of the man that she fell in love with way back when. You know, that he's funny, that they have a good time, and that's just where they are right now. Something tells me that them two are going to end up back together, and I think that that is such a wonderful story. You know, relationships are hard. They went through a lot of shit. We saw it. It just looks like now they both don't really have any reason to try to work it out. I mean, their kids are grown and pretty much gone now. You know, now it's just really about trying to reconnect and figure shit out and have a good time and just kind of put all the bullshit behind them so if they work it out you guys I think that is really really good because Bob seemed like he a, he a whole bunch of fun then the part of the show got really uncomfortable when they started talking about Kim's husband I actually felt really really bad because you know everybody was trying to back pedal it's an uncomfortable thing you know when you be doing these scenes you obviously forget that you have to be at a reunion where you're gonna have to face these people I'm sure they had been drinking or whatever um yeah we find out that they had had an earlier um incident on the bus that we didn't get to see where Chris went off on everybody because it was too cold he wanted them to turn down the air conditioner you know so he was going off and then he was just like you know when Nene said oh baby was that 
a read and he was like that was a read or whatever he said so they all were kind of going from that and saying yeah that's why he has sass and that's why he was so you know when they were talking later on that night the the part that we did see but even still when you sitting there with somebody that you was giggling about and calling them sassy and saying that he was gay and that people call him Chrissy and things like that. It's just a bad look. It's a bad feeling to know that this couple is sitting right there and you all was giggling about it with the exception of Sheree and Cynthia. <laughs> Sheree and Cynthia has since to remember that, damn it, this is going to come back up later on. So Chris said that he forgave the people that truly, you know, apologize because he knows he's a man. And, you know, like I told you guys in my video before, the fact that he's a dancer on Broadway, I'm sure he's heard that he's gay rumors before. Okay. That kind of is synonymous with dancers, which is unfortunate. I mean, I'm sure a lot of them are gay, but there are many that aren't as well. Right. So he says he's fine with it. He knows what he is. He's, he's confident in that. And for those who apologize, to him you know he forgave them okay well Andy says well who all apologized well basically everybody except for Kenya okay so then Kenya goes well I didn't because he said that I lied and I didn't lie okay because he was just like who calls me Chrissy she was like google yourself and he was like who calls me Chrissy then Mac trying to jump in she already answered and he was like I'm trying to talk to her son and then he was like well she already answered son okay and then Andy was like you get out of it because this is fucking the real housewives you not even a fucking husband get your motherfucking ass out of the whole thing okay she gonna answer this question because Andy was pissed he was so over it with these women because it just it was very distasteful I was telling somebody on Twitter last night, you know, they were like, well, why do they even care? Why would Chris and Kim even care if these women called them gay? Well, the thing is, if I'm not gay, then I don't want you to call me gay. If I'm gay, then fine. But we just need to make it clear that I'm not gay and people should not try to attack you in that way. It's just a matter of clarifying. No, I'm not gay. Andy asked Kenya did she apologize you know and then she was like well you know if I said anything to upset you and Andy was just like that's a bullshit ass apology of course you said something to upset him you guys were talking about him calling him Chrissy and all of that and it's just well if I said anything that hurt you or you know upset you then I apologize which you know that is never a really a for real apology because you already know that you upset him you obviously don't really care because otherwise you would just say, I'm sorry. It was my, it was my bad. And that was pretty much what everybody else said because there's nothing else you could say. You know, so then that's when Andy goes off on them. It's just like, it's a bad look for you guys to talk about somebody like that. You know, this person is sitting here and you just going on and on. I mean, I was just like, ooh, that Andy is good and done like the rest of us. <clears throat> Um, then we talk about the whole thing with the feds going to Candy and um, Cynthia's house, how scary it was, you know, the feds coming there, guns, suits. Cynthia said that the feds told her that they found out from Watch What Happens Live when Candy was on there and she said that, you know, their cars was at their house and different things and that's when the feds come. Candy said didn't nobody tell her shit, so she just had to assume, you know, well she didn't, she didn't never say that she thought Phaedra did. She was just like, I didn't know who it was. But Candy was just like, well, she had been upset about some stuff that, like, Todd had tweeted, like, earlier in that day. So I was like, well, did she call? Because, you know, Candy just wasn't really sure. But, um, yeah, that husband of hers, Todd, chimed in real, real quick, didn't he? Todd, did you think that Phaedra called? He was like, yeah, I did. Phaedra was just like, well, if you think that, that, you know, if that's what you think about me, then that tells me what our friendship, they was like, oh, whatever. Don't be sitting up here trying to be like, you know, act like you did everything the right way. You know, then he brings up the money. I was just like, he is pissed today. He was like, you said you paid the $30,000. You didn't. We had to show the proof of the receipts. And then she was like, but you got your money. He was just like, but that's not the point. See, you waited until right before the show was about to air. Okay. And then you get on here and act like you already paid it all right when we've been talking about this shit for years and years and years honey Todd let off and even Candy was trying to be in it like listen that's what you do you wait until the very last minute and then you come on and act like you didn't already did the shit you already took care of it but you know that's not what it is they was frustrated Phaedra just kept on saying you know well, if that's what you think of our friendship yeah you guys the friendship is done it's it's 
Then Phaedra try, starts to throw out the blame game. Well, you know, when you was running around with uh, Apollo all this time, why you didn't ask him for the money? She was like, because Apollo ain't had shit to do with it. It was between me and you. And you so worried about what me and Apollo was fucking doing, and you act like you knew everything what we was doing out there. Why the fuck you didn't know what the hell he was doing right up under your roof with your damn husband? I was like, oh, this shit is getting bad. Andy was looking like, oh. I don't know if I even want to hear all of this. Phaedra starts saying how she did a favor for him. You know, Todd's mom dying. He was like, they ain't got shit to do with it. Don't even bring my mom in this. It has nothing to do with it. Basically, Phaedra then gave them their money. Okay, so that part is done. And even, again, is the friendship. So, whatever. Then lastly, we get on this whole thing about Portia and how Portia had to beat her assistant's ass. We still don't know what the fight was about. When they showed clips of it, this was at the Christmas party. Portia is chasing her down the alley or whatever. And I look like she going to beat the girls ass. They was down on the ground. It was dark. You couldn't really see. But um, all of a sudden, everybody wants to say that Portia is this, this out of control, always wanting to fight. <sighs> This thing is so hard to explain because their circumstances is very different than just regular real life, right? Um, I know people are going to say that she's super violent and all of that, but in real life, you're not in situations where you're forced to be around people that you don't necessarily like to begin with, and then the person purposely pushes your buttons, trying to get a reaction out of you, knowing that you don't really have the best self-control when it comes to these situations, and then, of course, it happens. Now, the shit that they was telling her is very much true. You cannot be hitting everybody. You cannot be going off on everybody. Okay, you have got to learn how to be, you know, have some self-control. And I, and I think that if it was coming from people who she already didn't halfway like already, maybe it would have been received better. But, you know, it automatically put her on the defensive. All right, because she's trying to explain like, yeah, I know I have an anger problem. I go to anger management, but so the fuck does everybody else up in here? And they haven't hit anybody, yes, but, you know, Nene has had some moments, like when Portia said you didn't, you try to choke somebody out when she tried to choke Kim. Kim was, I mean, uh, Nene was like, well, yeah, but I ain't had sense enough, I had sense enough not to have that shit on camera. But it was still a different thing. I mean, Portia is, is beating asses and taking names, you know, and of course that's not good. It messes up your brand. People don't understand or want to work with you. Yeah, all that is true. But like I said, if it was coming from anybody else, then maybe she would have received it better. They all sitting up there with their own bullshit. I was just like, whatever. And then Kim, I think she realized that Portia was feeling beat up on. So then Kim took the other approach and was just like, well, I think we ought to applaud the fact that she's even done as much as she's done. And trying to figure out how to get out of this whole, I'm angry, I'm going to beat everybody ass, you know, mode. So... You did good, Kim. One more reason for them to just be like, oh, here she go. But, you know, they told her that she doesn't take ownership and she's trying to give excuses and all of that. I think in that moment, they just wanted Portia to just be quiet and just listen to what they say. Yes, Portia has got to get it under control. Now, this is three situations where she has been in fights with people. Whether or not she started it or not, now you're known as the girl to fight. Like they said, you know, we going to be ready, okay? This bitch, whenever it looked like she about to get puffed up in the chest, I already know that I need to have my fucking swing ready for that bitch just in case, okay? It puts you automatically on the defensive because you don't know how she's going to be. So, I mean, I got it. I got it. It's fine. You know, yes, Portia needs work, but we're all a work in progress. <laughs> and then lastly, you guys, like I said, Sheree says she's happy to be back. Kim said that... Um, you know, the show did help her realize that she can be all of it. Wife, mother, working woman, okay, and that she doesn't have to sacrifice one for the other. Kenya said that she's in love, you know, and that, uh, you know, her dad is back in her life and they're at a good place. You know, she we know that she's working on a baby. People are saying that she looked like she was pregnant and I actually think that she looks like she's taking hormones. Like, remember how fluffy and juicy Candy used to look before she got pregnant? Okay, I think Kenya has like that same I'm trying to get pregnant look. Cynthia says that it's been a bumpy year, okay, between her and Peter. All right, she's been fucked up. It's kind of still fucked up. People are saying that they're separated. I think they probably are heading for a divorce, which is unfortunate. But she's glad that Nene is back in her life. Okay. <laughs> the joke's right itself. I'm not even going to mention anything about that. Candy says that she looks good. She feels good. She's got her baby. And, uh, you know, 
She's still hoping that the friendship with Phaedra can, you know, work itself out. No, baby girl, no. Phaedra says that she's hopeful about everything, okay? Friendship with Candy as well as everything else in her life. She's just hoping for the best with everything. And since they got Phaedra up there as the last person to talk, well, Phaedra, why don't you close us out with something motivational? And so Phaedra goes on to say, you know what? We are all women on this show who have a platform. You know that we need to use the platform wisely, okay? We're winners. We have people that look at us and you know, we affect their lives and that we need to make the effect positive, you guys. And she goes on and on. It was very nice, you know, very nice closing benediction to the <laughs> to the full day. But that's pretty much it, you guys. Yes, thank God Real Housewives of Atlanta is over. All right, you guys, so that's it. Let me get off of here. So I got to do Potomac. All right, so you guys, make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is for It's Rocks. And everything else I do will be in the bottom five. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye. Mm -hmm.